Late night phone calls during the 2016 presidential campaign between longtime political advisor Roger Stone and then candidate Donald Trump now reportedly are under scrutiny by the special counsel's office. The Washington Post reports the two had a number of calls with Mr. Trump reportedly calling late at night from a blocked phone number. According to the paper, in recent months, the Trump organization turned over to Mueller's team phone and contact logs that show multiple calls between the then candidate and Stone in 2016, according to people familiar with that material. The records are not a complete log of their contacts, with Stone telling the Post that Trump at times called him from other people's phones. Stone told the paper he never discussed WikiLeaks with Trump and downplayed the importance of phone records, saying, quote, unless Mueller has tape recordings of the phone calls, what would that prove? Stone and WikiLeaks have denied collaborating with each other. Trump reportedly said in written answers to Mueller that Stone did not tell him about WikiLeaks' upcoming release and that he had no prior knowledge. That's according to people familiar with the president's responses. Joining us now, member of the Judiciary Committee, the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Border Security and Immigration, Democratic Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois. Senator, good morning. Good to have you with us. It's good to be with you, Willie. I won't ask you about your late night phone calls. I'm sure they're mostly about the Cubs <laughs> off season moves. So we'll move on to other areas. Uh, you came out pretty strongly yesterday, frustrated in that briefing. Uh, you said Gina Haspel was not in there, that she should have been in there, obviously the CIA director. And you said that Pompeo and Mattis told you all that she was not there at the direction of the White House. That's right. The CIA press secretary came out afterward and said, quote, the notion that anyone told Director Haspel not to attend today's briefing is false. What exactly did Secretary Pompeo tell you all in that room? That hearing yesterday, the closed door hearing, was a disaster. First, Secretary of State Pompeo puts an article in the Wall Street Journal and mocks members of Congress and the critics of the Saudi regime over the killing of Khashoggi and says we are, quote, caterwauling. I had to look up the word, the shrieking of cats, caterwauling over this incident. Then he and Secretary Mattis show up at this closed door briefing and there's an empty chair. Where is the director of the CIA? And the question was asked by Democrats and Republicans. The person who is ahead of our intelligence agency should tell us what they found about this. And we were told, well, she was told not to come by the White House. That was said by one of uh, by Secretary Pompeo at one point. And then later on, of course, uh, we, we realized what had happened here. They were telling us, interpreting what she should have been telling us about. And they were saying there was no smoking gun when it came to the crown prince. Well, I can tell you, there's certainly a lot of circumstantial evidence which lead us to the conclusion that you don't have 17 Saudis embark on this horrible escapade in killing this innocent man and dismembering his body without the knowledge or approval of the leader of that country. Uh, and for the president to think otherwise or for the Secretary Pompeo to say otherwise is incredible. So I just want to underline what you said there, Senator Durbin, which is that the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, told you all in that room directly that the White House directed the CIA director not to be at the briefing. I, I want to be precise. I believe that what he said was ask the White House when we asked why isn't the CIA director there. So is there a way for you to get to Gina Haspel on your own and find out conclusively what exactly the CIA knows and what it concludes? Because we've had media reports about what the CIA has concluded. Have you spoken to the CIA more directly and you, can you provide any insight and shed any light on what they know about the murder of Jamal Khashoggi? Willie, that's the frustration here. There are certain levels of um, eligibility in the United States Senate to receive this intelligence information, and I'm not at that level. There are about eight members of the Senate who are at that level. These briefings, the one we had yesterday for all of the senators, is our chance to really hear the information, learn what came from the intelligence, and draw our own conclusions. With her absence, that's why it was so important in terms of what happened yesterday. Uh, I, I join with other senators like Lindsey Graham, who say that until we bring have the CIA director before us, giving us an adequate briefing of the intelligence that's gathered, we're not going to be satisfied with the representations made by third parties. So, Senator, do you know? Know whether or not Ms. Haspel has uh, spoken to selected members of the Senate Intelligence Committee prior to yesterday? 
I'm sure she did. Uh, I, I would say of, of the eight, uh, Mike, who were uh, eligible, there must be continuous briefings. And some of my colleagues have kind of represented to us what has been found. But the notion that you need to find a smoking gun, you know, for those who've been in the field of prosecution for a long period of time, mm. you realize there can be direct evidence, there can be circumstantial evidence. And what do we know here? As was raised by a Republican senator at the hearing, we know that the Crown Prince's brother was contacting Khashoggi and telling him it was safe to go to the consulate before it happened. So there is certainly circumstantial evidence which lead us right into the Crown Prince's uh, decision making. Senator Durbin, Elise Jordan here, switching directions a bit. The First Step Act has bipartisan support in Congress. It's supported by all of the nation's governors. Why is Mitch McConnell not allowing this to go to the floor? That's, a, that's the right question to ask and about the right person. And we're doing everything in our power to convince Mitch McConnell in the closing days of this session. We have about two weeks left. Don't miss this opportunity. Can you imagine a bill on criminal sentencing and prison reform that has the support not only of conservative Republican senators, but Durbin and Cory Booker on the progressive side, the president of the United States, the vice president of the United States who came to the Republican conference lunch and begged them to uh, pass this bill before the end of the year, the endorsement of police groups as well as the American Civil Liberties Union. This is a once in a political lifetime bipartisan opportunity. Let's see. It. Well, Senator, why won't he allow this? What is I'm his opposition? Sure. I'm not sure, but I can tell you that we're talking indirectly <laughs> to the directly to the Republican leadership and to many others. There's no reason why we shouldn't call this bill. And Republican senators tell me, quoting Lindsey Graham again, you call this bill on the floor, it's going to have an overwhelming majority. The House has told us they're ready to take it up immediately. Senator Susan Page has a question for you. Susan? You know, Senator, the president leaves uh, in an hour or so for Argentina and the G20 summit. He's scheduled to meet with Russian leader Vladimir Putin. Do you think that meeting should go forward, given what's happened with Russian actions in Ukraine? And what response do you think the United States should be making to those provocative steps? Should we be willing, for instance, to see NATO ships be deployed there? Let me tell you, I, I am always in favor of dialogue over military confrontation. And if the president used this opportunity to make it clear that we find the Russian actions in Ukraine for years to be abhorrent and the most recent uh, chapter uh, in this history to be absolutely unacceptable, then it's a good investment of his time. My fear is the president will put his arm on his shoulder and believe everything Vladimir Putin tells him. We've got to stand behind the people in Ukraine. In terms of dispatching NATO, they are not part of the NATO alliance. We have told them that we are supportive, as many European nations have. I don't want to escalate this militarily if, if that's not necessary, but we've got to make it clear we stand behind the people of Ukraine and against this Russian aggression. Senator Durbin, the President of the United States says if he doesn't get his $5 billion in funding for the border wall, he's happy to shut down the government. Chuck Schumer, your colleague, says the President will get $1.6 billion. Are we headed toward a shutdown over this? The money that we appropriated last year for the president's wall has yet to be spent, only a small fraction of it. Five billion dollars is a waste of taxpayers' dollars at many different levels. This is a decision to be made by the president. He and he alone has the power to shut down this government. If that's his choice, it's a bad choice, and many Republicans are telling him the same. Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois, thanks so much for your time. Always good to see you. Good to be with you. And before we go to break, I want to point out a powerful cover of the new issue of Time Magazine. The piece is titled, The World Moves On and You Don't. It's a report on the hundreds of parents across the country connected by the tragedy of losing a child in a school shooting. You can read the cover story online, and the new issue is on sale tomorrow. And still ahead here this morning, our next guest sits on the House Intel Committee, the Armed Services Committee, and he's from Ohio, where General Motors is planning to shutter a plant and lay off thousands of workers. A lot to talk about with Republican Congressman Mike Turner next on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.